When installing a sliding gate motor, a common issue is how to get electrical power to the motor. This is something that needs to be considered even before starting the project, so it doesn't cost too much. If you're installing a new concrete driveway, it is relatively easy to run a conduit for mains power out to your gate before the concrete is poured. But where exactly do you run it? A lot of gate motors come with a power cord that plugs into a normal power outlet. Well, the motor is outside, so it would need to be a normal outdoor power outlet. But where do you put it? Well, it needs to be near the motor, but not on the fence. Otherwise, how will the power cord get past the gate? If your gate has a guide post, it could go on that. Otherwise, you could install a small post next to the motor with the power cabling hidden inside the post. We prefer to hardwire the power because you don't see any power outlet, cabling, post or cord, making it much tidier and no one can unplug the motor leaving it not working and avoid such things happening as a dog chewing through the cord, which we've seen happen. When hard wiring, the cable in conduit should come out of the concrete in the middle of where the motor is going to be. So you need to design the gate and footing carefully before starting so you know where the motor will be. Cabling required by other devices that are to be connected to the motor, such as an intercom, digital keypad, or safety photo cells can be done at the same time, although should be in a separate conduit from any mains voltage power cabling. More about other devices that can be connected to a gate motor will be covered in other videos to come. It's a good idea to have some way to switch the power to the gate off that is separate from other power circuits just in case the motor is damaged some way and needs its power turned off until it is repaired. You don't want to have to switch off half the power to your house. This can be done with a separate circuit breaker or isolating switch. If getting 240 volt or 110 volt AC mains power out to the gate is difficult, you can use a motor that has a separate transformer that plugs in at the house or wherever a power outlet is available. A low voltage cable is then run from this transformer out to the gate. The advantage of this is the cable can be run in a low trench wherever there is garden or grass or run inside a hollow gate track to get across the driveway. This saves having to dig a deep trench or rip up your driveway to get power out to the gate, so it's much less intrusive and you can do it yourself. Low voltage cable can also be run through an expansion gap in the concrete or a cut made into the concrete that looks like an expansion gap. If you want to know more about running low voltage cabling, please visit our website. Links to this can be found in the description below. Motors that have this option are generally 12 volt or 24 volt DC. That is, the electric motor that does the mechanical work is a low voltage DC motor, not a mains voltage AC motor. If it is a mains voltage AC motor, you will need mains power at the gate. Low voltage motors can have a transformer built in, so can be powered by mains voltage at the gate too. You may wonder, if you have mains voltage at the gate, why would you need a low voltage motor? Well, they have other advantages such as they can have a cost-effective backup battery 
that takes over if there is a power failure. This is charged and switched over automatically by a charge controller switcher unit. Low voltage DC motors are also better for heavier gates or gates on a slope, believe it or not, because they have a lot more torque when the speed is reduced electronically, which is done at the beginning and end of each cycle, providing a soft start and soft stop, and is commonly used to set the running speed of the motor, something that cannot be done with single phase AC motors. Low voltage DC motors are also safer, not just because they use low voltage, but because the controller can read the load on the motor more effectively, so will cut power to the motor and reverse it back if it is obstructed by something like a vehicle parked in the path of the gate by mistake. It can do this causing very little if any damage to a vehicle that isn't moving. If it is moving, this is a whole other story and will be covered by another video. Low voltage DC motors can also run at higher speeds and are more efficient, so can run longer without getting hot. This makes them ideal for gates that get a lot of use, such as those used in a gated community or commercial car park. Brushless DC motors have a much longer lifespan, so are ideal for larger gated communities or car parks that get a lot more use. A downside to running low voltage power to a gate is if the run is long, a much larger cable is needed to prevent voltage drop. Larger cable can be costly. Although if you use a motor that runs from a battery all the time and the low voltage power is fed directly to the charge controller to keep the battery trickle charged, then the cable and transformer can be much smaller and more budget friendly. A higher voltage transformer can be used to overcome voltage drop in the thinner cable if needed on longer runs although the charge controller must be rated to handle the higher voltage. A disadvantage of this power option is if there is a particularly long power cut and the battery does run flat, once power is restored, the battery must be left to charge up before the gate will work again. Although there would need to be a power cut lasting more than a few days before this would happen. If mains power is a very long way from the gate or non-existent, then a solar panel can be used to keep the battery charged rather than a transformer. This can be close to the gate if there is plenty of sunlight or if not, can be away from the gate where there is sunlight. The same thin low voltage cable that was used with the transformer can also be used with a solar panel. The solar panel can also have a higher voltage to overcome voltage drop in this cable so long as a suitable charge controller is used. A solar powered gate motor can be more budget friendly than one powered from mains voltage because there is no cabling to install from the gate to wherever the mains power source is. Although this depends on how difficult installing the cable is, how long a run is needed and how much sunlight there is at the gate. If you want to know more about solar powered gates, we have made a video on this topic. A link to this can be found in the description below. Another cost to consider with low voltage and solar power options is the battery. Normally sealed lead acid batteries are used that need replacing every three to five years, depending on the size of the gate and how much it is used. We've had them last as long as 10 years in the light duty situation and as little as two years with heavy use. 
you can get lithium iron batteries the same size and capacity as sealed lead acid batteries for around twice the price but they last 10 times longer so instead of needing to be replaced every 2 to 10 years they will last 20 to 100 years so will certainly last as long as the motor and solar panel so don't add anything to the cost of powering the motor just a bit more to begin with it's likely a sealed lead acid battery will need to be replaced at least once in the lifetime of the gate motor so choosing a lithium ion battery to start with makes good economic sense for really large gates and gates on really steep slopes across the driveway three phase ac motors with variable speed inverted drives are better because their speed can be varied with no loss of torque. For gates up to 2.5 metric tons, these motors can be powered from single phase 240 volt AC mains, because the inverter converts this to 3 phase AC at whatever frequency is needed. The speed of the motor is determined by this frequency, so if the frequency is low to start with, the gate will start off nice and slow, with full torque, so will do so even if it is really heavy. The frequency is then increased to accelerate the gate to a higher maximum speed, then slowed right down to a soft stop. Because these motors have no brushes and are very efficient, they are ideal for larger gated communities, commercial car parks, as well as industrial estates where the gate is larger and gets a lot of use. Three-phase motors can be powered from a 12-volt battery. This is possible by firstly using a DC to DC converter that converts the 12-volt to 339-volt DC that is then inverted to the three phase variable frequency 440 volt AC needed to power the motor. The battery can be scaled to match the size and use of the gate along with a suitable low voltage charging system that can also be solar powered. For very large gates three phase motors with an inverter powered from three phase main supply can be scaled to suit the size and use of the gate well that's it for this video if you found it helpful please give it a thumbs up videos to come will be about the actual fitting of a sliding gate motor setting it up and the connection of other devices to the motor such as an intercom, photocells etc. So if you want to catch these and more please subscribe it's only the touch of a button. As always thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.